There we go. Hey, you. Do you want me on YouTube? You just want to flop there. Oh, wait a second. Hello, folks. Welcome back, for I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. Again, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching my little web channel here. And we got a little bit better, although I had to miss some wrestling. Mainly because, yeah, I just take Thursdays off for the most part. Wednesdays, there was no AEW. Basketball, they have the money, I guess. That's okay. Ooh, wow. Ooh, very belchy here. But I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling, as you can tell. The wall of wrestling behind me there. And this is some WWE SmackDown. Hmm. Interesting show. But before, as I always do, Nick Notch. Yes, sir. Um, whatever I answered your question to, whatever it was, you, sir, earned this six count. Let's talk about some pro wrestling. You know, it's pro wrestling. With my Macho Man shirt on, as always. Um, starts off, Vince is backstage with Adam Pierce, one of his lackeys, and it says, You listen to me, you son of a bitch. You better get these three signatures on this contract, or you're fired. Yeah, for the most part, that's what he said. That's how the show starts off. Nick, poor Adam Pierce. He doesn't really want to see the three people. But the first one was very creative. We'll get to that. But again, let's start off the show. It starts off, Jeff Hardy comes out, cuts a promo about how he won the Intercontinental Championship from AJ Styles. AJ Styles says, you baby face, you cheated. You use that knee brace. You use that foreign weapon. And you dastardly won. I don't like you. Um, Jeff Hardy opens an open challenge, though, to everyone but AJ Styles. And then Jeff Hardy, uh, and then Shinsuke Nakamura shows up. 
Our very first match was Jeff Hardy versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the Intercontinental Championship. Starts off with a tie-up. Traditional wrestling match. And then there was a single leg go-behind by Shinsuke Nakamura. Again, I always do like it when they do that collegiate wrestling stuff. When they do, oh, wait a second, real wrestling moves in a pro wrestling match? That's always good. Uh, then it's the armbar, very classic. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Again, he keeps that nice, slow heel pace. We all know Jeff Hardy might likes prefers that much more faster pace a lot of classical wrestling by jeff hardy snapmare takedown um reversals out of the headlock and classical stuff smackdown must be getting some directions from from fox it's much more wrestling heavy it tends to be more competitive more Sports oriented? Wasn't there a show that was supposed to be that AEW? I know they've been preempted by basketball a lot, so I haven't watched them. Oh, although they do have a pay per view coming up Saturday. I don't know if I'm going to see that. We shall see. Um, oh, yeah, about Sunday. I might do a double header show on Monday, give a quick review about. Backlash because it's just that it's that weird timing thing. So I might do a quick review of Backlash on Monday after or probably before Raw, before my Raw review. Maybe have a little break and talk about some Monday Night Raw. So we'll see. Uh, let's see what else in this match. Zaro um, is interviewing the background. He's like. There's a little tease of a breakup here, and we'll see this continue on. So again, it's it's wrestling, it's wrestling based stories. It's like, hey, I went off, I had to use the bathroom. All of a sudden, Shinsuke Nakamura runs out of here. Wait a second, nature called. I had to go do something. Because of that, I lost my I lost my chance. Oh well. Uh, let's see. Then Shinsuke Nakamura, he starts to go after the knees. He's a smart wrestler. He's a smart New Japan wrestler. Again, now he says, says you know, this wrestling stuff, bah! I'm going to go back to my New Japan strong style. Uh, so he starts to work with the news of Jeff Hardy. Again, he's going to come over, center over the top, and then toss right into the lap of AJ Styles. AJ can't, let, AJ can't like that because remember, he and AJ Styles had a little. A little brouhaha. Two years ago? Wow. This coronavirus thing has me all screwed up in time. If this coronavirus thing has you all screwed up in the time, again, always feel free to send a comment and say, you know what? You're right. You're the only reason why I know what day it is. Actually, the only reason I know what day it is because I know which wrestling show is on which. And then Thursdays I have off. So I know when there's no wrestling, it's Thursday, unless it's AEW. And that has confused the heck out of me. Now it's just like SmackDown's on Friday. Weekend starts. Get back to work, you hobo! But then, let's see here. Um, this game, he's sent over the top, sent into AJ. Back in the ring. Jeff Hardy hits the whispers in the wind. Shinsuke's, uh, he set up that, that amazing, sl that, that set up. The draping, sliding German DDT on Jeff Hardy still looks great. I love the fact that now he's it's a draping style. So Jeff Hardy's pulling on the ropes. That's kind of holding on, saying, what the heck just happened to me? Shinsuke Nakamura hits that German, that sliding German suplex. That's great. And then a flying knee. However, Jeff Hardy's not to be denied. He is the interim continental champion. It's a twist of fate, swanton bomb. Jeff Hardy wins. Indeed. This was actually a really good match. A solid cheeseburger match. And then, Sami Zayn's back. Oh. Oh. Oh, wait. That's, that's, uh, that's Sami Nation. Uh, I forget what was that. <laughs> 
I forget what Sami Zayn's theme, theme is. It was also Becky Lynch's theme. Indeed. Um, so he confronts Jeff Hardy, knocks out Jeff Hardy, says, I am the true intercontinental champion. AJ Styles just smiles. And then we go off. Uh, and then we have the Firefly Funhouse, where Adam Pierce is the delivery man to the Firefly Funhouse. Bray signs for the Fiend. Easy. Good job, Adam Pierce. Good job, Adam Pierce. Two more signatures, or you're fired. Then we have Matt Riddell versus Shorty G. Matt Riddell calls out, calls out Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin is like, hey, Shorty G's not me. Shorty G will fight for me. Um, this is a way too short match, considering the talent level between Matt Riddell and Shorty G. Again, way too short. Uh, Matt Riddell, when he comes in, he like, <laughs> I don't know if it's just him or if it's muscle memory, probably, but he tries to high five the TV sets in the Thunderdome. Um, so, again, to the match a little bit, Shorty G, again, that double arm uh, suplex into a pin, bridging suplex. Amazing. Shorty G should have never left his amateur wrestling background. He should always have stayed that kind of Kurt Anglish style. But this, because that suits him perfectly. Him being jobber, nah, not feeling it. Uh, so he hits that double arm suplex into the near rolling German suplex. Matt Riddle kind of flips out of it. Then it's a big knee and pro Derek. And I'm like, that's it? Oh, well, Matt Riddle wins. He'll probably face um, Baron, Baron Corbin at Payback, which is way too soon after SummerSlam. SummerSlam, I think, was just a week ago. Again, they have to... I have no idea what they're going to do for the pay-per-view in September. Or might they take a month off and have it early October and have, like, a real crowd there? You never quite know, because I know AEW had a ten percent capacity, so I think they, I think it was, I think when I did the math, they said it was going to be fifteen. I guess the first show was ten, was really ten percent, so it was five hundred fifty people. Next week for AEW is going to be eight hundred and fifty people ish, because it'll be at fifteen percent, and then. They'll bump up to 25%. So that would be a little bit more than a thousand. Probably about 1200 ish. If the math in my head is somewhat right, which I think it is, it might be 11, might be, yeah, 11 or 12 something. We'll see what happens. Maybe you might see. Hobo Tom there. You never can quite tell. Uh, then let's see here. So with that, there was a Talking Smack recap. Biggie and Miz. Oh, Biggie just sits Fred Eagle. Biggie's the best. Then we have Adam Pierce. He knocks on Roman Reigns. Source. No one's there. I never realized Charlie Caruso is so freaking short. She's only a foot taller than Pallet. And that's when a pallet is on its side. She's tiny. She interviewed Baron Corbin. Oh my god, she looks like a little midget compared to him. Wow. Then we had Sasha Bailey promo. Um, Naya and Shayna talk about their promo that they interrupted. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Let me tell you. Naya, Naya Jax and Shayna Baszler. Kind of like what they did with Sheamus and Cesaro without the build-up. These two just don't like each other. It might... Gee, this is going back. But it might be like the initial rock and sock connection. Way back when it started. So we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see here. Then Adam Pierce is backstage. He, he, he sees... Um, 
Drew Gulak, again, Soldier Ant. Um, Drew's like, yeah, I want to find Braun Strowman too. He hits Braun Strowman with a chair. Just annoys him. Uh, that was funny. Poor, poor Adam Pierce is like, will you sign this? Will you sign this contract, please, sir? It's like, Braun's like, I will if you let me fight. I will if you let me fight Drew Gulak. Consider it done. Um, also backstage, we have Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro celebrating a little bit. They're talking. Cesaro is a little bit upset because Shinsuke Nakamura took advantage of him when he was away in the bathroom. Sami Zayn shows up, and both of them are like, we don't need you anymore, Sami. But it's Sami Zayn. Oh, and by the way, that beard on Sami Zayn got a little bit thicker. A lot of people put on 30 pounds during COVID-19. Sami Zayn put a good three inches on that beard during COVID-19. So we have Drew Gulak. Oh, yeah, the Matt Riddell and Shroy G match. Eh, if I didn't say it before, it was a ham sandwich. But I did say it before. So, yeah. Um, it seemed like there was a lot more wrestling in the show. Again, very typical for SmackDown. It's what Fox wants on his programming. Makes sense. Make Fox happy. Then we have Drew Gulak versus Braun Strowman. Braun just tosses Gulak from corner to corner. Beals him, whips him. Doesn't really matter. Now the big clothesline and a sense on. And of course the clubbing blows by Braun Strowman. This is just a glorified squash match. Deadlift choke slam into the running power slam. Drew dead, baby. Drew's dead. Like any. Although this is Drew Gulak. Soldier Ant. I'll up this a little bit. This is a ham sandwich. Cheers. That was an interesting flavor. A little ginger and lime. The old Moscow meal without the vodka. Indeed. And there's Lucha House Party backstage. Kalisa says, no, no, no. Tranquila guys back here. Um, and then two thirds of the Lucha House party get jumped by Shinsuke and the uh, Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro. Good stuff. Because then the next match it's Kalisto. Lucha, 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 Lucha. Taking on Cesaro. Cesaro is too strong for Kalisto. Kalisto is a little bit too, too quick though. Um, Kalisto jumps. He does a top. I'll tell you what. This is the one thing. I've always enjoyed about anyone with a lucha style. They are so flippy and so springy. It's going to be hard to, to describe this, but, I try, but I'll see if I can. So, Drew Gulak's here. Or, um, I'm sorry, Kalisto's here. Top rope's here. Cesaro's down here. Kalisto jumps over the top rope, bounces off the second rope, and lands on Cesaro. Um, uh, what did I jump from top rope? It's a jump, it's a top rope jump springboard off the second rope to floor. That was amazing. Oh, I, I have to give props where props are due. I've done a moonsault before, folks. I can never do that. I would break like a femur or something. Um, Let's see here. Then Cesaro, again, back in the ring. Cesaro's again shows the strength. He catches Kalisto. Again, Cesaro's too strong. Kalisto out of the corner. That basement dropkick. And very smart going after the knees of the bigger opponent. Has a DDT and then a then a buckle hurt and the short hurt rana. And now a buckle rana just for a good measure. Um, Grand Metal League beat up Shinsuke Nakamura. Came with the revenge, that's enough to distract Kalisto. He's like, hey, I'm winning. You don't have to come out here. Um, Cesaro rolls him up. Yeah. It was okay. Cesaro won. Still a pretty solid cheeseburger of a match. And Vince is backstage. Yeah. You got two out of three. I would have had three out of three by now. 
I have two of my goons. My henchmen use you as a battering ram to get that door down. And I would have gotten Roman Reigns' signature already. You only got two out of three. You had to get three out of three. Or you're... You're... Fired! Well, then we have Tamina uh, and Nikki. Nikki Cross backstage. Nikki's so adorable looking. I'm so sorry. Um, then Alexa Bliss shows up with her pigtails. Old school pigtails with the little pink flares on each side. The little pink highlights on each side. Indeed. Um, Nikki, she mentions the fiend. And, and Alexa loses it. She takes the mug that she gave Nikki Cross. Nikki's favorite coffee mug. Oh, no. Alexa just smashes that mug. I just wanted to give Nikki Cross a big I'm sorry hug. Here, Nikki. I'm sorry, Nikki. Yes, I'm very... Wait, you're, you're, you're really short, Nikki. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. And Tamina, please don't kill me. And we all know about her, her father, Jimmy the Superfly Snuka. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, that was kind of sad. Then, uh, eventually, Adam Pierce gets backstage, finds Roman Reigns. We shall see. In the next match, the main event of the evening, we have Heavy Machinery and Big E. And wow, B with that weird, funky double unicorn with the eye in its head instead of a horn? That's intriguing. Taking on the Miz and Morrison and Sheamus. Wow, you know what heel's going to walk out on this team? Yep. Uh, Otis and John Morrison starts off. Why? Why do you have Johnny Mundo as a jobber? Oh, <sighs> Johnny Mundo was so good. Why? Why, Johnny Mundo, why? Why not just be happy in Impact? Stay in AAA. Maybe Moonlight at CMLL. I'm sorry, Johnny Mundo. Let's see here then. So, yep. Again, why? Um, Mundo tries to splash. He starts getting freaking shoulder tackled. He can't do anything right. Um, Tucky Knight. Tucky Knight hit a crossbody on him. Uh, Miz and Morrison. They do a little dub, double team. The gut buster. That's good to see. Tucky's now getting the small guy treatment. Very tip. If you don't know what the small guy treatment is, the small guy treatment is generally the small of the two tag team partners. In WWE, it's well, now it's been so formulaic. The big guy and the small guy. Small guy's job is to get beat up and look sympathetic so you can get the hot tag to the big guy. Tucky and Knight's pretty big. I mean, once you start to get over that 300 pound mark, you shouldn't really be considered a small guy. But I guess he's the lesser guy of the three. Um, so he gets beat up a little bit. Um, again, yeah, then, then Seamus gets his licks in. Then Seamus, like, goes outside and rings the bell. No reason. I have no clue. He's like, oh, wait a second. Let me in. Ding, 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 ding. I don't know. Seamus just goes, Seamus is like the heel who's not good at being a heel right now. Uh, the Miz, again, he does that. That uh, JP is sitting clothesline to the corner. Very classic of the Miz. He whips Tucker Knight into the corner. He ha allows Johnny Mundo, his tag team partner, to whip him in. He does the clothesline, kind of sits down the ring. Very classic Miz offense. Uh, Johnny Mundo. Uh, Tucker hits a belly to belly. However, uh, Mundo gets tagged in, does the mountain punches. Again, very creative, though. Very almost Brazilian jujitsu-ish too. The way he kind of passes over the legs of Tucker Knight. Um, yeah, then Seamus 
tags in. He starts to argue with the ref. I don't know why. Mundo gets whipped into Sheamus. Sheamus, Sheamus says, F you, boyos. I'm out of here. Sheamus leaves. Yeah, like he, I think from the backstage segment, when Sheamus is like, well, what's your plan? Well, we don't want Tucker Knight to get in here because he's actually pretty agile for a big man. Big E just wants to rip the Miz apart. We don't want to let him in. Otis is just crazy. Never let the crazy man in. So Seamus says, so your tactic is to not let the three of them in the ring. They're like, yeah. So we'll see what happens. Then uh, Seamus leaves. It's Then it's the Biggie and Miz. Miz eats three belly-to-belly suplexes. She's that's amazing. And there's a big splash. Miz then lures Big E to a top rope spot. Johnny Mundo again gets in with a turtle stomp onto Big E. Otis nearly does a double. I, I thought he was going to do the double caterpillar. He went to do the single caterpillar. And poor Mundo. I hope he's getting paid a lot. But if that was it. Um, Big E had the big ending on Miz. Heavy Machinery and Biggie win. I got another solid cheeseburger match. Then Roman Reigns is backstage and he's sitting there. He's like, yeah, I want to fight him. I want to kick his ass too. I'm not signing that contract. Let me look over. Paul Heyman. Paul Roman Reigns is a Paul Heyman guy? Oh, Bravo! Bravo, WWE! Whoa. Brother Love! I love that. And that's how the show ends. Pretty darn good ending to a good show. Wow, SmackDown is a quicker watch. More wrestling involved. There's storylines, but they're they lead to the wrestling. It's not the wrestling. The wrestling leads to the storylines in SmackDown. It's not the storylines lead to the wrestling, like in Raw. Bravo. I'll tell you what. Because of everything they put together, the way they, they, they mesh things together, this was a cheeseburger SmackDown. And that's it. That was SmackDown. So again, uh, Sunday I'm doing stuff. Saturday I'm off. I don't even know who's wrestling on Sunday. Not so much I know about Payback. This was this seemed like it was really thrown together because of Thunderdome. But again, very typically. So Monday will be might be a double show. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Monday, I do have a lot to do. I have work, grocery shopping, gym, double shows, call. Um, Tuesday, again, it's going to always be a live stream day for Impact Wrestling. Impact Wrestling is, is a little bit looser on the restrictions of what, what I, I can show. Wednesday, I might take off. I think AEW is on next Wednesday. I don't know, though. Thursday, um... Thursday, I actually might do the AEW All-In predictions. We'll see about that. Friday, SmackDown. Saturday, I'm a...